Welcome, welcome, fellas, to the Captain Saver Bro Show, episode 29, The Player, a necessary, e- a necessary Evil and Why You Need to Become One, right? And the downsides of being a player. But first, before we get into the game, this show is available via Spotify, Apple Music, YouTube. So if you want to catch the audio version of it, go on Spotify, Apple Music, type in the Captain Saver Bro Show. If you want to catch the, the video version of it, go to YouTube and type in the Captain Saver Bro Show, and I got you. This, all, this episode is also brought to you by theplayersclub.vip, theplayersclub.vip, and saverbroacademy.com, right? The Players Club is our private men's group. I run a private men's group where we chop up game, we learn, we grow. We have monthly meetings, well, meetings twice a month. You also get access to uh, free access to courses and, you know, uh, discounts, 50% discounts on coaching calls now, the coaching calls that we do, the group coaching calls, those are free once you get in the Players Club. It's $100 a month. Very, very, very valuable. You also get, um, again, you get you get access to uh, free courses and you get access to premium courses at a steep discount. So join us at the Players Club, a fellowship of men from all over the world, chopping up game, growing, networking, learning from each other. That's the theplayersclub.vip. Also, follow me on all social media at King Dreism, K I N G D R E I S M. That's on TikTok, that's on Facebook, that's on Twitter, and that's on Instagram. And subscribe to me on YouTube and type in the Captain Saver Bro Show or type in King Dre, and my channel will come up. But that ends that. Let's get straight into this game. All right, so let's jump straight into this, fellas. Um, today, I want to talk about, you know, being a player. Right. And and what comes with being a player and why you should be a player or or at least, you know, go through a phase of of the player shit. Right. Um, I believe that it's a necessary evil. A lot of guys today that I see today. And not just today. Right. But more more so today it's important. A lot of guys, you know, try to put the cart before the horse. Right. And what I mean by that. Is. They try to get straight in, you know, as soon as they become adults and as soon as they get out there, they want to find a woman and settle down with a woman and thinking, you know, that it's going to last forever and thinking that relationships are just on autopilot. They have no experience with women. They don't know how to turn a woman on. You guys don't know how to read a woman. You don't know how to speak her language. You don't know how to arouse her. You don't know how to keep her interested. You don't know how to, you know, raise the interest when the interest loses, when she loses the interest. You don't know how to keep her attracted. You don't know how to raise the attraction when she loses attraction. You don't know conflict resolution skills or nothing. And you think you're going to, you know, come in here young and just – you know, no, with no experience and just keep a woman around forever. It don't work like that. You need a, this it's is a skill and you need to be good at it just like you need to be good at anything else. Nowhere else in life can you go somewhere and expect <clears throat> to have success and you're not good at something. You can't have success with women if you aren't good at it. Not in this society. It just doesn't work like that. And a lot of you guys fail to grasp that. You guys think that, oh, well, you know, you think that the the rules and the laws of the game don't apply to you. The rules and the laws of the game apply to everybody. You see what I'm saying? And just like in any arena in life, in order to become masterful or in order to become successful at something, you have to practice. Practice makes perfect. You have to get out there and you have to play and you have to do. You are not going to hold or have a long-term relationship with another human being, and you don't know how to deal with that species. You don't know how to deal with them. You don't know what makes them tick. You don't know how to speak their language. You're not going to be successful, and this is where a lot of guys flop. You see what I'm saying? And so, you know, I believe that it's a necessary evil, right? And when I say evil, I mean not like morally evil, but – you know, some guys may you don't want to practice. You don't want to enjoy the process. You don't want to to do the process of learning the dating game and learning the women, and you just want to skip to the to the end. That's why I call it an evil because you know, for the guys who don't want that process, but the process is everything. You have to go to the through the process to become great. You see what I'm saying? You guys have to date women and learn women. For you young guys and older guys that don't have experience, you have to do it. 
a lot of guys, a lot of you guys I hear, you guys look at dating as a chore, right? You guys look at dating as a chore. And the reason you look at dating like a chore is because you want to hurry up and skip to the cake, right? And so, you know, dating women and, and courting them and, you know, going on dates and, you know, you know, learning them and learning their ins and out, it seems like a chore to you because your eye is on the end goal, right? And what my, my advice to you guys is to take your eye off the end goal and put yourself in the moment and enjoy the game. You're not going to enjoy a, a game of basketball if all you're thinking about is the championship. Basketball is not going to be enjoyable for you. You have to enjoy every moment. You have to enjoy, you know, the practice. You have to enjoy the game. You have to enjoy the drills. That's what makes a great basketball player, wanting to be out there, enjoying the process. And so I need you guys to enjoy the process of dating. I'm not saying, I'm not saying try to screw everything that moves. But you need to date non-exclusively for exclusively at a high level for at least a year or two of your life. You see what I'm saying? To learn women, right? And if you if you don't do that, if you don't get to practice, you're not going to be good at them. They're going to always run circles around you. You're never going to be able to keep one. You understand what I'm saying? And when I say, when I say dating, I don't mean just pump and dump. Because a lot of you guys be on there, oh, I'm going to just pump and dump. I'm a pump and dump. I know a lot of guys who all they do and all they did was just smash women. They, they, they didn't take the time to know them. They didn't, you know, have relationships with them. They didn't jump in the fire. They didn't get the, ski, they didn't get the bruises and the heartbreaks or nothing. They just smashed and kept it moving, right? And then when they wanted to settle down, the woman, you know, ran circles around them and conquered them because they never understood and learned women. They, they mastered the art of getting sex. They mastered the art of getting laid, right? And so that's as far as they go. And that's what happens when you just pump and dump and you just make your life about pump and dump. Engage women, bro. Women are beautiful. Women are beautiful. This ain't the women hating channel. I love women. Women are beautiful and they have a lot to offer. You see what I'm saying? Um, engage it. And it's fun, especially if your game is, if you got your game on point, you know, and you're a respectable man, you know, a feminine sweet woman is everything, man. It's, it's fun and it's very enjoyable. You know what I'm saying? So get out there and experience that. But, Again, you guys got to get past the pumping dump thing because when you're just pumping and dumping, having the skills to get laid is not going to, it, it's not enough to, you know, it's not enough skill. You, you ain't going to have the, the skill level to keep a woman around forever, right? You have to look at this like a video game, right? And, you know, life is a game in itself, but look at it like a video game where a marriage or for the guys that don't want to get married, but, uh, uh, you know, a family and, you know, you have a monogamous situation with your family and your woman long term when you settle down. That's the hardest level of the video game. That is the ultimate level as far as dating and relationships, getting one woman and keeping her interested over a long term and providing for a family. It's harder to do that than to date around. It's harder to maintain a, 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 a monogamous relationship with you guys want that companion, that family. That's ve a very difficult thing to do. It's easier to get out here and play the field. You see what I'm saying? So in order to get to that level, right, in order to get to that high level, that last level, you, you can't skip. You got to get out here. You got to bump your head. You got to learn what you like. You got to learn what you don't like. You see what I'm saying? You have to get out here. There's no if, ands, or buts about it. You can't skip this part of the process. And if you do, it ain't going to work out for you. And a lot of guys don't realize that, and that's why I have a business today. Now, and, and I'm telling you guys, to, you know, I'm giving you a suggestion on a way you should live. In order for me to do that, I got to give you the downsides and let you know what comes with it. Now, just because there's downsides don't mean that you should avoid something because there's downsides to everything. There's downsides to running a business. There's pros and cons to everything. Nothing is just all good. When you drink some soda, it feels good, but it's, it's consequences on the back end. Everything has cons, uh, you know, and so do certain lifestyles. If I tell you to go monk mode, there's cons to that. You understand what I'm saying? If I tell you to be like Dan Bozerian, there's cons to that. It's pros and cons. So I'm going to give you the, con the, the downsides while also giving you why you need to, 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 to live this way, right? And so we're going to get started with, you know, why you should 
go through this phase, you know, at some point in your life, right? And, you know, the earlier the better. The earlier you get out this out of your system, the better because system the better because every man has the the urge to you know conquer women right whether regard i don't care who he is you have that urge and that desire it's best you get that shit out of your system now before you get 40 or 35 and then try to get out here in a young person's game because the dating market is a young man's game you see what i'm saying a young woman's game that's why it seems raggedy to a lot of people because they skip it you know, doing whatever they're doing and they try to revisit it and their maturity just can't really grasp it. And the things that's going on, it just don't fit with their lifestyle. And so it's like, oh, the dating pool got pee in it. And no, it's just not for you at this point. You're not, you're supposed to have elevated out of that. And so what I'm saying is get the shit out of your system early before, you know, <clears throat> you have to go back and revisit it. And you don't want to revisit it while you're married or in a long-term relationship or even have the urge to go do it. You see what I'm saying? You have the urge now that you're in a relationship and you're in a long-term situation. Now you just have the urge because you, you know, because for whatever reason to go conquer and go fuck different women and do all this shit while you married or while you in a, you know, an exclusive situation. So just get it out of your system early. Me, I got that shit out of my system. Do I have my moments? Of course. But I don't have the desire to go, you know, uh, the strong desire like I did when I was 21 to go fuck this chick, go fuck this chick, knock this chick down, get this, knock this down, knock this down. I don't have that desire no more, right? For me now, it's more so quantity, I mean, quality over quantity. And you want to get to that stage, but to get the, re, the, the way to get there is to go through the quantity phase. You see what I'm saying? <coughs> so, but now, one of the, 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 the first reasons you should go through this phase, <clears throat> right? The one, of the one of the first reasons you should take on the player shit, uh, you know, for a little bit of your life again. And I mean, I don't mean all your life, but for, you know, for at least a year or two of your life, you need to live it at a high level. The first reason is that you, si you satisfy your natural desire, right? You satisfy that natural desire, thus contributing positively to your mental well-being, right? When you satisfy that piece of your, your, yourself and you know that you have that part of your list, life figured out, that contributes to positive mental health, right? Because success with the opposite sex, sex, excuse me, success with the opposite sex is paramount to positive mental health. That's why we're here in the, fir in the first place. That's what we're born to do. And if you notice and you look around you, the people who can't do that and the people who fail at that suffer greatly mentally is a mental tax on not being good with the opposite sex. Look at women like feminists or look at women who, you know, got used and ran through and all this shit by men and, and they couldn't figure men out. Look at them now. Look how bitter they are now. Look at the incel culture. Look at the guys who are incel and migged how, how miserable they are. Look at the guys who run up, take the AKs and the, and the ARs and go and go do bad stuff at schools and, and, and churches and kill people and shit like that. Them dudes ain't getting no pussy. They can't get pussy. And that's the root of why they mad. You see what I'm saying? They not successful at what they here to do. You see what I'm saying? You here as a man, you here to do good, great things, advance your society, make your society a better place, and you here to reproduce. You know, you here to be good with the opposite sex, men and women. And when you can't do that, it's going to tax your mental health. This is why when your woman leave, you depressed. This is why when your woman cheat on you, you depressed. This is why when you're a virgin and you jack off all day, you get depressed because you can't be, you're not successful. This is why when a woman rejects you, it makes you feel bad. You see what I'm saying? This is why when you can't get girls, it, it, it fucks with your confidence. Just like with women. When women can't keep a man around past sex, sex it fucks with their confidence. When all women, when all men want to do is smash a chick, it's going to fuck with her confidence. It's going to kill her confidence. It's going to kill her mental health. You see what I'm saying? When women be having all them bodies and they, can't, they ain't got nothing to show for it, they be fucked up up here. I believe that's God's way of taxing you at failing. You see what I'm saying? So taxing you mentally. It's no secret, again, when you look at incels and feminists and, and, and all this shit, <clears throat> the 
the common denominator is that they suck at the opposite sex. And so when you satisfy that, it's going to contribute positive to your mental well-being. One of the main sources of confidence that come from a man is his ability to get laid. That is a main source of confidence. You can see a guy who's broke. You can see a guy who's broke with nothing going on in his life. If he can get pussy, he walking around with his head up. This is why men measure men, other men, when they walk in a room, you know, by, by the chick that's on his arm. It's no re- there's no there's no coincidence why this happens. It's a huge it's a big part of life. And don't let nobody else convince you otherwise. That's why you're watching this podcast. That's why the person who lied to you on their podcast made a podcast in the first place. This is a very, very important piece of life. So make sure you get good at this and make sure you get good at it as soon as possible. You know what I'm saying? They tell you, oh, just chase excellence, just chase excellence, just chase success, chase success, chase the money, chase the money, get your money, self-improve, be great, of course, but don't neglect this part of your life, bro. You cannot neglect this part of your life. Ask me why I'm saying that. Because I have clients who chase the money all their life and now they're 45 years old and they have to trick. Or when they get a woman, the woman is running circles around them. Yeah, they got all the money, the cars and all that shit, but they can't keep it. They can't get a woman to like them or none of that without spending their fucking money and they're tired of it. I have clients that pay me to fix that. You see what I'm saying? Get this part of your life figured out. It's very, very important. Don't let nobody tell you otherwise. And the people who are telling you otherwise, it's because they failed at it. Misery loves company. They telling you, oh, fuck them, you know, to hell with women. You don't need them. You know, you know, live by yourself. Be a monk for the rest of your life. You don't need you know, all this shit. If you look at their background, the reason that they say that is because they failed and they want you to be like them. Misery loves company. This is a very, very important piece of life, a very important part of life. And best believe the men who got their podcast telling you to live a certain type of way in the background, they got bitches or trying to at least. <clears throat> from the money that they make, from preaching that, that, that hate to y'all, they take that money and they level themselves up and now they start attracting women. Trust me. This is a very, very important relationships are a very, very important part of life. I didn't say get married or be in a monogamous a monogamous relationship, but what I am saying, <clears throat> what I am saying is that you need to learn how to be good with women. You need to learn how to be good with the opposite sex because it's going to contribute to your mental health positively. You're not wrong for that. You're not a simp for that. You are a human being. That's what you're put here to do. Don't let these guys make you feel crazy because the fact that you can get girls adds to your confidence. The fact that you can get laid adds to your confidence. It's supposed to. It goes hand in hand. The feelings you feel when you conquer a woman is not a coincidence. It's supposed to be like that. So you can keep doing it so you can, you know, sustain society. So you can sustain your genes and you can reproduce and we can just keep it moving. There's a reward for being good with women. It's by design. Don't make let people make you you feel bad. Oh, you know, you shouldn't tie. You know, you shouldn't, you know, you shouldn't. Uh, <clears throat> uh, uh, you shouldn't have to chase women to feel good about yourself and that blah, 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 blah. Don't listen to all that shit. I feel good. I feel good that I'm good with women. Oh, you shouldn't want female validation and you, you're a simp if you want female validation. That's bullshit, bro. Everything we do is for validation from the opposite sex. Everything. Somehow, some way. Whether it's to get revenge because somebody didn't want you because you was trying to level up to get revenge on a woman, whether you was trying to attract women, whatever. Everything you, that you see, every product that you see, some man was trying to get the attention of some woman. That is the driving force behind all society. Validation from the opposite sex. Everything women do subconsciously revolves around 
validation from the opposite sex and everything that you do and everything you're trying to do. So let's let's cut the games out. Let's stop the bullshit. Stop letting these dudes lie to you. There's nothing wrong with that. That's what a part of the human experience. The people who make something wrong with it are jaded and damaged. And they hurt. And I'm not saying that on some, oh, who hurt you shit, but it just is what it is. The same way when you see women, oh, fuck these dudes. These dudes ain't shit. We swearing off men. We don't need men. All men must die and all that. Why is it different when a woman say that? Why is it different than when a man say it? It's the same thing. They're going through the same shit. They've swore off the opposite sex. The same thing that you the same things that you can't have. The reason that they feel like that is because they failed and they want company. Misery loves company. So again, you want to satisfy your natural desire. Your natural desire. When you do that, it's going to contribute positively to your mental health. <clears throat> you see what I'm saying? You don't see you don't see too many people who do wild shit. Like again, run up in schools and run up in that that's good with that's good with women. Or, you know, um these old, you know, heinous crimes and, you know, fucking with kids and all this old bullshit. You don't see people who good with women, men who good with women, you don't see them doing that. You see what I'm saying? All of that stuff has a you know effect on the, the, the fact that they can't. It fucks with their mind, and it warps their mind to do weird, dumb shit, wild shit. I'm not saying that that's the only reason. Yeah, you got upbringing, you got trauma, you got you know whatever the reason, and none of that shit is no excuse. But I'm not saying that, oh, it's just because of they're not good with women. But there's a common denominator if you look at all those guys. You feel what I'm saying? So remember... Success with the opposite sex is imperative to positive mental health. Now, the second reason that you need to, you know, become a player and live it for a little bit, right, is you learn how to deal with women and maintain them, which is, again, crucial, right? You understand their emotions. You're going to have to understand a woman's emotions. You're going to have to understand how to speak to a woman's emotions in order to be successful with them. You're going to have to understand how to appeal to a woman's emotions in order to be successful with them. You're going to understand, have to understand how to calm a woman's emotions in order to be successful with them. You're going to have to know these emotions so you can provide a safe space for them in order to be successful with them. This shit is very important. This ain't no game. This is why the divorce rate is so high because men don't know this type of shit. You see what I'm saying? You have to understand a woman's emotions. You're going to have to understand a woman's tactics because women have tactics. Women are manipulative. Women do manipulative things to run circles around you. And you have to see this to nip this in the bud. If a woman sees that she can manipulate you, she starts to lose respect for you. As crazy as that, as that may sound. Now, I'm not saying every woman is going to be manipulative or have a, a, a manipulative disposition. Let me take that back. Most women, if not all, have a manipulative disposition. But manipulation is not a bad thing. I'll just say that. And so you have to understand what's going on. And the reason why women have a manipulative disposition is because they can't ex assert themselves most. And, 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 you know, a lot of the times they can't assert their strength to get what they want. And so they have the gift of, of manipulation to get what they want. Seduction and being underhanded. You see what I'm saying? And that don't always mean something bad. But you have to understand these things. You have to understand their tactics. You have to understand their manipulation games and their mind games so you don't fall victim to them. You see what I'm saying? Again, you need to learn how to deal with women so you can maintain, to, you know, to deal with them and maintain them. And you have to understand their emotions. You have to understand their tactics. And you have to understand their, you know, manipulation when they manip you know they manipulation games you also have to learn how to <clears throat> maintain attraction which is very very important maintaining attraction is important a lot of guys think that once she's attracted she stays attractive it don't work like that you have to learn how to maintain this attraction there's a saying that says with success with success, the rent is due every day. 
that does not exclude relationships. If you want success in your relationships, you have to show up every day. I mean, you could take some days off, you could lax and be whatever, but you have to show up every day if you want overall success in your relationships. If you want success, the rent is due every day. I said that to say you need to learn how to be attractive every day, learn how to maintain this attraction over a long period of time. This is very, very important. Guys think that, again, once she's attracted, she's going to stay attracted. It just don't work like that. You have to know what to do when the attraction levels falls. What are you going to do? What are you going to do when you start to notice that your wife is telling you not tonight often? Not tonight, I don't feel like it. What are you going to do? And you married or you in a monogamous relationship. You know, it's easy to get on here and say, or to write in my comments and say, well, I'm going to just go find me another bitch. Or I'm going to just leave her. I'm going to just, it, that, that, that's easy to say. But what happens y'all together for, you know, the last seven years, right? And you have strong attachments. And you know that when you step out, she probably going to step out. And you don't want to do that, Right. Or you want to keep your family together because hers not not feeling it for the last week is not enough to break up your family. It's not like it's disrespect or something like that. So what are you really going to do? Don't get in my comments talking that player shit about I'm going to just kick her to the curb and all that. That's bullshit. No, you ain't. What you going to do besides be frustrated and, 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 you know, act like a bitch about it and make it worse? What are you going to do? Do you know what to do about that? Do you know what to do when your woman ain't fucking... Do you know what to do when your woman ain't feeling you? When your woman is telling you not tonight? Do you know what to do? Every other night you hearing I got a headache? Do you even know what's going on? Do you know why she's saying it? A lot of y'all don't. And again, this is why the divorce rate's so high. Because when you hear that, you get frustrated. And you have a right to be frustrated because you have needs that you want your partner to meet. You have a right to be frustrated. But you still got to fix the issue. So what are you going to do? Exactly. You know how you learn what to do when you deal with women, when you practice dealing with women. You see what I'm saying? This shit is important. This shit ain't no game. And I really hope y'all understand this shit. You got to play the field. You got to play the game in order to learn this type of shit. What are you going to do when your wife come home late? Cause she trying you. You going to break up the whole, you going to, she come home late one day, what you going to do? And you see, say something about it, she give you a little bit of pushback. What you going to do? What you going to do when she stopped giving you head? You know that she stopped giving you head. And then you say something about it, and she say, okay, I'm going to fix it. And then she don't fix it. What you going to do? You going to dump her? Yeah, be a badass in the comments and say, yeah, I'm going to just dump her and get another bitch. After seven, seven years, and y'all got two kids together and a mortgage together. You going to dump her? Right? What you going to do? That's, a, that's a, a legit question. I know what to do. You know why I know what to do? Because I lived it. I played out here. I know exactly what to do. You feel me? Now, yeah, you can come to me. You can pay me to teach you. Of course, and I got you. But you, the, the point is you want to get out here so you can learn what to do in scenarios like this because these skills are needed to maintain your woman's attraction over a long term. You have to know how to maintain the attraction. What are you going to do when she's not attracted to you no more? Because y'all don't know why y'all think that when you get her in a relationship, it's just going to be high all the time and everything is just going to be hunky-dory and she's just going to be lubby-dubby. After them first six months, that shit, that shit start to go down. It, it goes off auto. At first, it's easy. It's on autopilot. But after after six, you know, five six months, you're gonna have to take control of that ship. And if you don't know what to do, the attraction just gonna keep going down and going down and going down and going down. This is why all the relationships only last a year or two. And then the woman start getting crazy, and you know, because the man don't know what to do. Y'all don't know what to do. Y'all want to be in love so bad, and y'all want to be in relationships so bad. Y'all just want, as soon as you get out of high school, you just want to fucking jump straight into a relationship, and you want to skip the process. You can't. I don't know one person in this day and age who's, you know, get married at 18, and they just stay together. Not in this society. I'm not saying it don't happen, but it don't happen often. 
what you gonna do? What you gonna do when your girl feel like she ain't getting enough attention from you because you ain't giving her enough attention, and then she start posting crazy on Instagram? What you gonna do? You can handle that, but what you gonna do? You don't know. You don't even know how to handle that. You see what I'm saying? You got to get out here and play the game, right? Now, a part of learning how to deal with women and maintaining them, you're going to have to learn how to deal with things like pullbacks. When a woman pull back from you, what are you going to do when your woman pull back from you and now she get cold all of a sudden? What you going to do? You going to watch a video that tells you, oh, she's fucking somebody else if she gets cold. And then cause pro- unnecessary problems. Maybe she pulling back for other reasons. What are you going to do? You don't even know what to do. What are you going to put? What are you going to do when there's conflict in your relationship? Everything is starting to become beef and conflict and shit, which can be fixed. All of this stuff can be easily fixed. But if you don't know how to fix it, if you don't know what to do, then what? What are you going to do about the beefs that y'all having? And now it's starting to become overwhelming with emotions and bad emotions at that. If you can't fix this stuff, your relationship is going to be sour and it ain't going to last. This is why it's essential to get out here and play the game so you can develop these things and you can learn. Don't be scared to take a bruise. Don't be scared to get your heart broke. Don't be scared to get your ego crushed. It's a part of the game. That shit makes you stronger. If it ain't going to kill you, it's going to make you stronger. It's going to make you more solid. It's going to make you more attractive. If you can take those L's and make them lessons and learn from it in a positive way, that make you solid. That make you attractive to women. Don't take the L's and then make it, let, let it make you bitter. And you go MGTOW and shit. You apply the game and you learn and you grow. That make you solid. That make you stronger. You see what I'm saying? But again, you need to learn how to deal with women so you can maintain them. You have to. Now, another reason that you should play the field, you know, on some player shit is you learn what you like and what you dislike. This is very important. You learn your taste. And you can only learn your taste by going to taste, if that makes sense, right? If you get into a relationship when you're 20, 21, by the time you're 25, 26, you'll have a whole different appetite, bro. Trust me, because you're growing. You understand what I'm saying? Steak don't taste the same as it did when you're 21. You know, when I was 18, I loved ramen noodles. But the more I got my money up and I started eating and trying different restaurants, I ain't ate a pair. I ain't ate ramen noodles in I don't know how long, if that makes sense. You don't want to find yourself in a situation to where you with somebody based on seasonal taste. And you have seasonal taste because you don't know what's out there. You don't know what you like. You don't know what you dislike. You don't know what type of women you like. You don't know how you want to be loved. You don't know how to love her. You don't know how to give affection. You don't know how, you know, the type of affection you want. You don't know if you like when women say or do certain things. You don't know if you like this or you like that. That shit is important. When you're talking about trying to get into a long-term monogamous relationship or a marriage or even a polygamous relationship, that shit is important. You got to know what you like and you got to know what you don't like. That way, when you see, when it's time for you to settle down and you see what you like, you see the woman what you like that you like and that's for you, you know to go for it. You know exactly what she looked like. I know exactly what mine looked like. I know exactly what I like. I know exactly what I don't like. I don't like certain things. Now, the second reason that you need to, you know. You see what I'm saying? Become a player and live it for a little bit, certain right? Certain things I don't like. Is you learn how to deal with women and maintain them. And so them, when I see it, cruel. I'm just not going to deal with it. Certain yeah. things I like. So when I see certain things, that does I not exclude gas a little relationships. Harder. I if give you want a little bit more access, in your relationship, but I wouldn't you have know to show that up every day. If I didn't date. I mean, you can if take some days off women, you relax if I, if I didn't whatever. engage with women. But you have to show up every and day again, you want the things that I like at 38 are different than I like that t- 18. If you want success, the rent is due every day. Well, 20, I said that to say. Or even 28. You need to learn how to be attractive right? every day. Learn how to maintain when I was, attraction. 
over a long I didn't period know. of time. This is very, very important. Guys I didn't think know that, that I would prefer once she's attracted, she's gonna stay woman. attracted. It just don't work Ooh. like that. You What's have to know what to do body? when the attraction levels falls. What are you on my do? knees as a man? And when I what say you knees, do? I don't mean if I don't have it, I'm not going to I'm going to die. Right? But you as start soon to know that your wife right? is telling you not to. So tonight, based on often. the way that I like my shit not ran, tonight, I don't feel like I didn't what know that do? I would and you prefer a homebody until I until now. You know, where I have it's my own easy business, to get on here and say driving. Um, or to write in my comments and you know, say, well, I'm going to just all of my time goes bitch. to my business. Well, I'm going to just working, leave her. I'm you know, just all day, that, all that's night easy sometimes. To say. And I'm going to need my woman, I'm going to need my partner to handle certain things. And if my woman is more of a people's person or if she's more of a woman who likes to be out and about, not out clubbing and being a hoe or nothing like that, but you have some women who like company. They like to be, hang with their friends. They're more extroverted. They get... You know, that's where they get their energy from, right? Versus, you know, introverts get their energy from, you know, alone time and being alone or whatever. But I'm saying that to say that I didn't know, I didn't know that I didn't like, not that I didn't like, but I would prefer a woman who was more grounded at home, a woman who got her her energy from, you know, home life and family life instead of, you know, social gatherings and social, you know, this and, 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 that's not to say that a woman who's like that, something is wrong with that because there's nothing wrong with a woman wanting to go out to eat with her friends or be social and shit like that. There's nothing wrong with that at all. But for me, it's just, it's, that, that's just not for me. Not only because I run a business and this and this and that, but, you know, and, 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 and you know, a woman who's out and doing this and they prioritize this type of stuff, they can't meet me where I'm at and they can't meet my needs that way. They can, but they would have to sacrifice you see what I'm saying? But not not only that, is just that sometimes I don't have the energy to to accommodate that. Like for a woman who wants to be out and go out and do all this, I don't have the energy to accommodate that a lot. And so when I when I meet women now and I see that they like to be out and brunches and you know trying different restaurants and moving all around, sometimes I don't have the energy for that. So I know off the off the rip, we're not gonna be a good fit for something long term. But how did I get to that conclusion? You see what I'm saying? I got to that conclusion because I've been there. I've been dating women. I've I felt it. You see what I'm saying? I'm more of a, I'm not, I'm not a person that likes crowds. I don't like to be out and about. I don't like to. Now, I like to do things. I like to go see places. I do, but, like, there's certain things I'm not for. Like, I don't, I don't. I can. I don't have to ever go to a restaurant a day in my life. I don't. I don't care for sitting in a restaurant. I don't care for going to concerts and festivals. I don't care for stuff like that. And there are women who do. And it's not because they hoes and want to be the other dudes. That's just what gives them life. That's what gives them their dopamine. And so, if I have a woman like that, I'm going to have to accommodate that. And I'm going to have to sacrifice. And ultimately, that's I'm gonna get tired of that shit. Because we our, our, our lives our lifestyles don't coincide with each other, so I would rather have a woman who's kind of on my timing, if that makes sense. I'm not really on the scene like that. You see what I'm saying? They like to do the things that I want to do. I want to travel and you know do all that shit, but you know I would have a I would rather have a woman who's who who likes that, like. Let's say I want to travel. I want to visit all 50 states and visit all the countries. If I have a woman who's scared of traveling or or who gets drained by moving around, right? There are women who and people who get drained by moving around so much, who get drained by, you know, flying on planes and shit. Everybody don't like to travel. So if that's my lifestyle and that's what I want, right? If, if, if that's what I want, if I get with a woman who's not like that, I have to drag her you know what I'm saying? And it's ultimately going to be become a problem. But how do I even get to this conclusion in the first place? How do I get here in the first place? It's by doing it and knowing and understanding. Okay, these are my likes and these is, this is what I don't like. I didn't know to do this when I was 22. I didn't know to think like this as far as like long-term relationship type shit or, or, or you know, compatibility and shit like that. I didn't think like that when I was 22, 23 years old. But now I do. And that'll save you a lot of wasted time. You get with somebody who, you know what I'm saying, you don't know if you like certain things. A lot of guys, a lot of guys don't even know, again, that 
think they don't, you know, they don't know whether they like certain things or they don't know if they this. You, you know, a lot of guys, <laughs> they, they, they don't realize that they don't like a woman who posts on Instagram, right, for whatever reason. So a lot of the time it's insecurity or whatever. The, the point is they don't like it, and they don't realize they don't like it until they get into a relationship with a woman and she doing that shit. You know, because at first it's like, oh, it's cool, whatever. I don't care. Do your thing. But then you get with it, and you don't you don't really like the attention. You don't like that attention and seeing a hundred dudes. You see what I'm saying? Messaging your girl, but you don't know that unless you do it. But if you try to wait, wait, and just chase excellence and just chase money for the next forty fucking years, and then we get your money. You ain't got when you forty. You ain't got time to be playing around. You know what I'm saying? Bullshitting and wasting two, three years dating on and off. You don't got time to be doing that. So now you 40, you don't know what you like or don't like. You get a chick, you know, three years in and she doing some shit that you don't like or you tried to make it work and shit like that. Now you 43, 45, your dick about to start working the whole fucking nine. And, you know, <laughs> it's just a, a mess. And you don't feel like getting out here dating again because you don't got the energy you did when you was 20 and shit like that. You see what I'm saying? So it's just get out here now and figure out your likes and your dislikes. Figure out, you know, your tastes. I didn't mind when I was 18, 20, I didn't mind chicks that smoke weed every day. I didn't mind chicks that drink every day. I didn't know I didn't like it until I dealt with a woman who drank all the time. You see what I'm saying? I just imagine, you know, I'm 40 years old. I found the one, I found the woman that I think is the one, right? And I think that we just going to be together forever. And she smoked weed or she drink or whatever. And it don't bother me at first. But now five years in, I'm seeing that how her smoking weed is affecting us and the relationship and the progress. So now I'm 45. I don't got the energy to keep getting out here, going to clubs, getting on dating apps and this and that. I don't got the energy to do that. Get that shit sorted out now. But I said that to say I didn't realize I didn't like that when I was 18 or 19 years. I didn't even care. But when I dealt with that shit, I was like, ah, this ain't it. And I did that. Because I dated and I dated, I, I dated around and I dealt with women and I dealt with a woman. We didn't get serious, but it was enough for me to say, you know what, I can't, I can't even get serious with that, with that. <clears throat> you see what I'm saying? You have to learn what you like and what you dislike. Learn your taste. And the only way to learn your taste is to get out there and go taste shit. Again, I say this again. When I was 18, I thought ram, ramen noodles was everything. I can't remember the last time I had ramen noodles now. You see what I'm saying? That was my taste then. Get out there and go taste. Go see what's out there. It's out there for you. Now, the next thing is you learn <clears throat> what you will and what you will not tolerate. That kind of goes to what you like and what you dislike. You learn what you will and won't tolerate. You don't know that you can't tolerate your woman telling you I had a headache every other day. You don't know that you can tolerate that until you go do it. You don't know that you can and can't tolerate a woman posted on Instagram just casually. You don't know if you can tolerate guy friends or not until you go do it. I know exactly what I can and I cannot tolerate. So when again, when I see a woman <clears throat> and she does things on a date that I can't tolerate, I'm not going to waste my time because I know not to waste my time. I didn't think like that when I was 20. And so I wasted, not really wasted, because it's not wasted time if you learn. And obviously I learned because I learned enough to teach you guys, to be teaching you guys daily for years, right? But, so in my sense, it's not wasted time. But you get what I'm saying. It's unnecessary bumps and bruises. You don't have to go there if you just... Get out there and, 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 and figure this shit out. Figure out your style. You know what I'm saying? Figure out your groove. Develop your own style. Develop your own ism. I have my own way of doing things. This is why I stand out from it, everybody else. This is why everybody, you see my comments, man, Dre, you different. You not you don't speak the same shit like everybody else. Your shit different, but it works. It's effective. This is my style. Yeah, I learned the game from my dad and this person and this person. And, you know, this person schooled me when I was in the joint. This person schooled me when I was in jail, gave me some shit. You see what I'm saying? And I took that shit and I ran with it. But over time, I developed my own style of the game. 
the way I do things is unique and different from everybody else. But that comes from me getting out here, playing the field, and developing over time. So that way now when I meet women, and I'm in a position now to where I'm meeting women, that's, vi- that's quality. When I meet women now, I'm coming at them, right, because I've developed my style, my own game, my own ism over the years. I'm original. When they see somebody, they see somebody different and original and authentic and it's fresh and it's a breath of fresh air to them. That comes from me getting out here and developing myself into who I am today. I'm not just another robot that just came through a machine. I got out here and played and developed my game. And it's unique. If you listen to me, now, I got my sons out there. Shout out to my sons, and I say that respectfully. I got people that listen to me. They, You know, a couple of them, you know, they listen to me. They soak up game, and they go, you know, you know, spread the game or whatever. You know, and you can hear me in them, right? But you don't hear nobody else in me. Although you sometimes you may hear the talking points or, or, or whatever because, you know, the game is what the game is. You see what I'm saying? But I'm original. I'm me and nobody else. My ideas are different. My I come from a different perspective. So when people hear it, they're like, oh, shit, I, ain't heard, I never heard it broke down like that before. That's because that comes from my experiences. And what I learned and what I hear from other people and the things that I, you know what I'm saying, what I observe from my clients and my friends and my family and what I go through. And it's, it, 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 it's, it's me. You see what I'm saying? When I present it, it's, it's from me because this is what I've developed over the years from playing and actually doing it. Not just a robot parroting, parroting something that somebody else said. You see what I'm saying? This is what separates me as far as this business world go and, you know, in the content. But this is what also separates me when it comes to dating women. When women meet me, they say, what the fuck? This is different. This is new. It's a breath of fresh air. You very different. Where does this come from? I don't tell them. I know where it come from. You see what I'm saying? But it's my style. Only guys who get out here and play the field, hear that from women. You different, something about you. That's because they developed a way of doing things that's true to them and their authentic self, which cannot be replicated. You can't copy me. You can't make another me. But how do you get me? My experiences in my life. And I get these experiences from my life from playing, from getting out here. You can try, you can say what I say on a video, you can, you know, whatever, but you can't be me. Nobody can. No other dude she meet is going to be me. You see what I'm saying? I don't try to be, you know, <coughs> I be I be talking to women, right? And they be telling y'all, they be telling me about, you know, y'all listen to certain popular content creators and y'all just be parroting in the shit that they say and shit and it's a it's a turnoff by the way if you didn't know that don't even parrot nothing i say and i don't i don't want you to think like me i'm trying to give you the game so you can get out there and develop your own style i'm creating leaders i don't want a cult following i want to create a realm of leaders you see what I'm saying? What we call a circle of success. Because when I when I help you grow, I can lean on you and you can lean on me and we can lean on each other. I don't want a cult following and, and just, oh, you know, everybody do and think is me. No, I give you, you know, objective game and you take that and you build upon yourself. You see what I'm saying? But a lot of these chicks, man, y'all be sounding just like other dudes and parroting their shit and it's a huge fucking turnoff. Right. But when a woman meet me, I'm me who I am. Right. And so when she meets somebody else and she meets somebody else, she's never going to get this me. If I put it down on her right, I imprint on her because I'm something fresh and I'm something original that she can't get from nowhere else. This is why this is important. She can't get you from anybody else. That's why I teach you guys to play the game the way that, you know, and I teach you the things that I teach you so you could be original 
and, and, and you can develop yourself to when you, you when you do get a woman in your life and you do deal with women, you are original and they can't get you in order for them to get what they with in order for them to get what you giving them, they gotta come to you. In order for the women to get what I'm giving them, right? They got to come to me. Now, am I saying what I give them is the best in the world? Of course not. But ain't nobody else got what I got, if that makes sense. And if what I got is all she need, and what I got is the thing that she's been looking for for her whole life, I got her forever. You understand what I'm saying? I got her forever. Because you can't get it nowhere else. And the reason you can't get it nowhere else is because they don't make it nowhere else. It comes from me. And again, my experiences. And how do I get these experiences? Playing. Playing the game. So play the game, man. Play the game. Now, I want to move into, you know, the downsides, right? I'm going to give you guys a few cons and the downsides of the player lifestyle and being a player. So, again, I don't want you guys to live your whole life on some, you know, uh, sleeping around and doing, because, you know, eventually it's going to get played out, right? And I'm not telling you that that's the way to go. If that's what you want to do, do it. But I'm not telling you with this podcast and this information is that that's the way you should live your life. But what I will tell you is that you should at least experience this at a high level for, again, at least a year or two. And go on and get it up out your system. But these are the downsides. Or these are the pro. These are the pros that come with it. Come with it. And again, there's nothing that you're gonna do in life that doesn't have cons. There's nothing, nothing that you uh, do in life that doesn't have a, a downside to it. Everything has a side effect. Everything. You understand what I'm saying? Everything. Even drinking water, bro. Taking medicine. Whatever you do has a side effect to it. So, let's get into that. Now, the first, the first downside or negative uh, of the player lifestyle of being a player is in order to play effectively at a high level, it's going to cost you. Um, and again, I said effectively at a high level, it's going to cost you. Can you get women, loads of women while you broke or, 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 you know, as cheap as possible? Of course. But. You're not gonna have. You're not gonna get the maximum results and the efforts and the lessons that you need, right? As to where you know when you can put some, uh, you know, when you can put some chicken behind your motion. You see what I'm saying? When you can put some 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 money behind your game, right? And that's not saying be a trick or trick or lead with your wallet, but money and resources behind anything make it much better. You see what I'm saying? If I pulled up, if I pull, if we pulled up at a gas station, me and you. We the twins. We got the same level of game. I'm in a I'm in a Benz and you in a Camry. The bitch gonna choose me any day because I represent a more comfortable life. You understand what I'm saying? And so that's all I'm saying. Money do make things much better. It make things better in every other area of life, and it makes things better with dating. Right? And so you need money if you wanna, you know, again, play at a, a a high level effectively. I'm not saying you have to be rich, but it costs. It costs money to do dates. It costs money to go on trips. It costs money to get fly. You see what I'm saying? It costs money to, you know, uh, you know, with the, with the Rolexes and the, and the cars and, you know, put the bait in, and to woo with chicks with bait to make the game easier for you and all that. That shit costs money. It costs money to have a fly-ass crib so when a woman come over there, she comfortable. That fucking king-size mattress... You know, that shit costs two, three thousand dollars. If you get a good one, she get on that motherfucker and melt. You see what I'm saying? That shit costs bread, right? Again, you don't need money to get women. You don't need money to play the game. That's not what I'm saying. And don't don't think that's what I'm saying. But if you want to play it at a different level, put it like this. The players who got the money, who got the expendable money to 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 back to so they money can they can put their money behind their game, right? They're going to far out seed you and they're going to outdo you and they're going to win over you every single day of the week because I'm a player, you a player. I hit the chick up and say, hey, let's fucking, you know, go downtown and, and, and ride some or, or go to the water and ride some jet skis. I feel like ride some jet skis. And you a player and you say, come to my house and Netflix and chill. More than likely, she's going to want to ride the jet skis. You see what I'm saying? She come to your house, you're on a, you're on a, you're on a county jail cot. You see what I'm saying? A twin size because you ain't got your shit together. She come to my crib, it's a king size mattress. She get on it, she melt when she on it. You see what I'm saying? She more than likely going to flake on you to come kick it with me. So the guys who are, if you got game, 
money gives you the edge over anybody else who don't. That's just a hard reality. Women are hardwired to, to be attracted to resources. Even a woman that got her own money. You did what I'm saying? So <clears throat> you just can play the game more effectively by using bait, using things to, 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 to set up. It costs money to spray on, you know, get that nice cologne and shit. You see what I'm saying? You walk by a chick, you smell like weed. I walk by a chick, I smell like, you know, uh, Chanel Blue. If the bitch ain't no weed head, I'm going to get the choosing signal over you. You see what I'm saying? Or you smell like Dove soap or Axe or something like that, that Axe body spray. And I smell like Chanel Blue. Just based on that, you know, I'm going to get to choose. That's not to say that my game going to be more effective than yours, but I'm going to have the advantage over you. You understand what I'm saying? So, you know, in order to play the game effectively, it's going to cost you some chicken. That's not to say, again, if you don't have money, you can't play or use your money to play. I said put your money behind your game. Not use your money to get women or trick or anything like that. It's a big fucking difference. So don't come in my comments with the bullshit. Now, the second the second downside, and this is a, this is a cold one, is the scars. You're going to have scars, man, you up in this game. You're going to get you some scars. You're going to be disappointed. You're going to get your heart broke a couple times. You're going to get your ego bruised. You're going to get flaked on. You're going to take confidence hits. It happens, but this makes you stronger. Nobody who's ever played football never got tackled or got a bruise or a bump or got the wind knocked out of them. Nobody who's ever played basketball didn't sprain their ankle a time or two. Nobody who's ever fucking played baseball, most people that most people that play baseball, when they go up to bat, they at least got hit one time. You see what I'm saying? Or was running and tripped and fell and sprained their ankle or something. You see what I'm saying? When you play, it's a downside to playing anything. It's going to be scrapes and bruises. Nobody who ever had a fight didn't get punched in the face. Even Floyd Mayweather, damn, that hit the, hit the mat a couple times. You see what I'm saying? But it's a learning experience. I've been fucking, I've had my heart broken, my ego bruised, my soul crushed, the whole fucking nine. But that made me who I am today. Look what I was able to do with that. You're going to get scars, bro. Scars is necessary. Every, every warrior has some scars. But who do the bitches like? The bitches like the warriors. The scars make you stronger if you take the lessons the right way. You know, the L's are lessons, not losses. So if a chick leave you, she play you for six months, she leave you, you learn something, bro. You learn. You became, um, you know... <clears throat> You, you develop thick skin. So now when you're in a relationship, right, when you're in a relationship and, 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 you know, you don't have that feeling of, oh, you can't live without a woman because a woman has walked away from you before. Woman can walk away from me all she wants to. You know how many women have walked away from me at this point? The first time it happened, I was devastated. I didn't know, I didn't know if I was going to be able to eat or not. I couldn't eat or nothing. The first time it ever happened to me when I was a teenager, I couldn't eat or nothing. Now, go. Do you know where that come from? Do you know where that type of strength come from? From it happening. You see what I'm saying? So those scars are necessary. That pain, that process is necessary. This process is necessary to, for you to become stronger, for you to have more game so that you can be, you know, be successful in your relationships and give your woman everything she needs. You see what I'm saying? So you can be happy. She can be happy. You can have a happy family. She can meet your needs the whole fucking nine. You're going to have to. Hey, there's nothing come without sacrifice, my brother. You think you finna graduate from high school and meet the bitch of your dreams, the woman of your dreams, and it's just going to be all good. It don't work like that. Don't nothing come without sacrifice or a little bit of pain. You're going to have to go through the motions, my brother. You can't skip it. So that's one of the downsides of, uh, uh, of the game, right? And it's just only a downside the way you look at it. But you're going to have some scars, my brother. You're going to have some scars on your heart. You're going to have some scars on that ego. You're going to have some scars on your, on, 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 on your uh, 
you know, on your on your emotions and your spirit. But once they heal up, it just makes you much stronger, bro. So when a woman break up from you, now you know what to do. When your woman pull back from you, now you know what to do. It ain't going to affect you. You ain't going to feel needy to chase and, oh, I can't live without you and shit like you did when you were 17 and the girl in high school did that shit to you. You see what I'm saying? Get out here, take your bumps and your bruises. The first time I got tackled, the first time I got hit hard, I was like, I'm done. When I was playing football, I was like, I'm done with this shit. But it kept happening. It kept happening. Before you know it, I was a beast. First time you get hit in the mouth when you fight, you're like, ah, oh, hell no. Nah. But the more you do it, what's happening? You know what I'm saying? Them scars make you attractive. Women love scars <laughs> for some reason. Now, we don't like scars on women, but women love scars on us. We don't like women typically with all that experience and all that. We don't like all that. We want ours pure. Right. But they like scars. They like warriors. They like guys who've risen, risen above defeat and conquered. You know what I'm saying? Despite the odds. You know why women find me attractive? Because despite what I've been through, I'm strong. And I didn't let, you know, the game beat me down. I didn't let the streets beat me down. I didn't let my background beat me down. You know what I'm saying? When women see me and they see what I've accomplished and they know where the fuck I come from. You see what I'm saying? You know, they know what I've been through. They know where I come from. It's very attractive. They, they see the scars. They see the shit in my eyes. You see what I'm saying? But f for them to see me do, you know, go through those and, 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 and I still go through all that and I still win and I still rise, it's the most attractive thing ever. You know, when, when I meet women and they, and they get to see where I come from and shit, right? But the women who I used to fuck with back in the days who know me, you see what I'm saying? The women who I used to fuck with who know me and see where I come from and see, I, you know, the street shit and, you know, going to prison and all that. And they see what I built now, you know, and going through those hardships, how I was able to rise above that and build something great. That shit is very attractive. What I'm saying is the scars. I have scars from all of that, though. I got scars from the streets, bro. Physical scars and mental scars. I have scars from that. I have scars from relationships and, and, and dealing with women. But when women talk to me, they see wisdom and not bitterness because I turn my lessons into wisdom. When I talk to women about the game and, and lace them with game and they see my work and they see they see that I know so much. Damn, how you know so much? Well, I know how you know so much, but damn, you go through all that. And it's, it, it, it's crazy that you're not bitter like a lot of guys. And I just hear wisdom and not bitterness. That's attractive. They get wet and moist from that, bro. Trust me. Trust me. But that, that's the scars that came with the game. That's the scars that came with the game. It's a beautiful thing. Trust me. Embrace it. It makes me the warrior. That's why y'all fuck with me. That's why y'all like me. You feel what I'm saying? But anyway, the scars, that's the downside. I don't really look at it as a downside, but, you know, y'all don't like to get dirty. Some of y'all soft. Y'all don't like to get dirty. Bring it on, baby. Now, number three. Uh, the next thing that the next downside is it's going to be more emotional stress from dealing with women, especially if you deal with the wrong ones. I'm going to just say this. And I, I didn't realize this until a couple of years ago. Women come with bullshit, even the most even the most the, the best women. They come with their bullshit and they come with emotional stress. Right. Even if they all good. Right. Because you have to take from yourself to give to them. Now they get the good ones give back to you. And so they make it all better. But you don't realize how much of an emotional, uh, you know, emotional tax a woman can be sometimes until you take a break from the game. And when I say take a break from the game, I don't mean go through no fucking drought, right? You go through a drought and then you just, you want women, but you can't get them and you got to jack off and you're watching porn and you ain't sliding in DMs and all that shit. I ain't talking about that. I'm talking about voluntarily taking a break from the game and taking a break from women and porn and anything. You'll start to see how, Free it is. Emotionally free it is. Now, after a while, you start missing the shit. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? But initially, you'll you'll realize how much of um, you know, how much of an emotional sh strain. I don't even want to say strain, but how or, or even stress, but how um how much of stuff that that women come with. Women come with little nuances that kind of weigh down on you. You see what I'm saying? You working all day and your girl just want a hug. Although it's a hug, you don't feel like hugging nobody right now. 
And if you hug her, it's not going to just make your world upside down. But the more that happens, it just takes a piece of you because you have to be responsible for somebody else's feelings. I, that's what I'll say. When you have to be responsible for somebody else's feelings, which comes with leadership, by the way, heavy as a head that wears a crown. If, when you have to be responsible for somebody else's feelings, that that it's a nuance that weighs on you. And I don't want to say weigh on you, but it's a nuance that you're going to have to wear. But if you're strong, you can carry that. Right. And if you carry it well, you get all the rewards and the spoils that come from that. So we ain't ducking that. I ain't never ducking that. Bring me them emotions. I know what to do with it. Right. But what I'm saying is you're going to deal with that. It's just a part of the game. Right now, if you deal with the wrong type of woman, them hoes going to stress you out. And that's a negative. That's a real negative of the game. Women will wear you down emotionally if you're not care, if you're not careful and they'll break your spirit. If you take L's and take L's and take L's and you don't learn from it. Look at the incels. Look at the guys, the MGTOW guys. Look at them super hardcore red pill guys. They, they, them dudes is crying out in pain. That's pain. Fuck these hoes. I've taken a red pill and I, this and I, you know, hypergamy this. And I, that's pain, bro. That's pain. But that comes from a lack of not playing, not knowing the game, not understanding the game. You see what I'm saying? But, yeah. You're going to get some emotional stress from dealing with women, right? And, again, especially the wrong ones. But if you watch the podcast, if you listen to me, you ain't got nothing to worry about because I break all that game down for you, so you're picking the right ones. Now, this, is a, this, is a, this one, for me, affected me probably more than all of it, right? This one and the one after this. The next downside, and this is a big one. Good, quality, smart women – are not going to fuck with you, bro. And when I say smart, I say smart as in they can see that. So just women who smart that can see what you want. Now, you can have good quality women who aren't smart, and a lot of the times those are younger women. But those younger women and those women tend up being damaged and misused, right? But a woman who's good and she's smart, like she had a dad in her life or brothers or whatever, she got a little bit of game to her, and she's a good quality woman, you know what I'm saying? And she's smart. She ain't going to fuck with you, bro. You know what I'm saying? If she do, she ain't going to take you serious. And, yeah, we be wanting to fuck. And, yeah, we just trying to get the nut. But if you got a good woman, if you can get a good woman, we want to keep good women. Let's not act like we don't. So don't act like, oh, just because we fuck, we just, we won. No. If we can fuck and we can't bag them like that, that shit fuck with us, especially if she good. We don't want to see that goodness go to somebody else. We want that on our team. Let's be real. You see what I'm saying? Good quality, smart women, when you're going through that phase, they typically ain't going to fuck with you. You see what I'm saying? Especially if you don't know how to hide it. Now, you can you can hide the shit, but you can't hide it for too long. You, it's only so long fake thugs can pretend, right? But a good quality woman, a sm good quality smart woman that you most often want in your corner anyway, she ain't going to too much fuck with you. And if she do, she ain't going to take you serious, bro. If you play the game the right way, again, you can trick her and you can be manipulative and all that shit. But at the end of the day, that end of the day, that ain't what you want to play. You don't want to play the game like that. And I'm not going to teach you how to play the game like that. Although I know how to play the game like that. I'm not going to teach you that. Right? That's irresponsible of me. Right? That goes against my my integrity code. But you're going to lose out on, on, on some good ones, bro. Some good attractive ones. Because they know they worth, they know they value, and they know if they fuck with you. They doing themselves a disservice. And ain't nothing wrong with that. So just understand when you out here playing, you just gonna have to charge some of them to the game, bro. You gonna have to charge that piece to the game. Like, you know. Um, yeah, that 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 stings you too. You know, you just like, you know. And it be times where I be in my mode, like I'd have been in my mode before, and I run across a chick and I know she good. I just don't, I just don't fuck with her, bro. I just you see what I'm saying? I would take my chances of, of, of just doubling back when, I, when I'm on what she on. You see what I'm saying? So, you know, that's a big one for me. And that and shit like that stings, man. When you got a chick and you know she 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 it and she meeting all your, you know, she checking all the boxes and shit. Y'all vibing and y'all this and this and that. It's a couple dates. You think you about to hit it and she hit you with the, ah, we ain't on the same page. You trying to convince her and shit, but she know better than that. She's smart. And you want a smart woman like that on your team anyway. Again, the young dumb ones, they may be good and quality, but they dumb. They don't know no better. So you can get them. But you're going to end up fucking that up because of the way you live. 
You dig what I'm saying? So it's just a necessary evil. Once you start to grow out of that and once you start to position yourself and you start to, you know, you know, uh, carry that ism and carry your style and care. once you start to grow up out of that you'll start att- you'll start attracting them again they'll start coming back into your life again and you can entertain them now that's not to say that everyone you meet is going to be for you right because you can meet a good quality woman she just may not be for you that particular one you see what i'm saying but good quality smart women are not going to fuck with you generally now this one stings and this one is tough man this is probably the worst one, and this is this is how I got most of my scars. You are going to lose quality women who you have deep attachments to because of it. So let's say you do get one of them ones, right? You get a chick, everything is all good. She treating you well. This is this hurts. This hurts. Really, this really hurts. She treating you well because you got the game. You're a player, so she pouring into you, and she pouring into you, and she pouring into you. But guess what? You ain't want to be committal. You know she pouring into you for a reason. She want the commitment. She want what you have to offer. She want access to you. But you live in the life. You can't give it to her. She ain't going to stay with their, uh, beating your side hoe and your, your toy forever. Women know how to walk away from your ass, bro. And one thing about women, they get over you. I don't know what y'all be thinking about. Oh, once a woman is alpha widowed and the imprint, they just want to do for me. Women ain't like that for real, bro. Once women get over your ass and they get you out their system, a lot of the times they don't never look back. They don't ever look back. I don't give a fuck how good you was. Because you got to understand, there's 8 billion people out here, bro. Out of 8, 8, 8 billion people, it's 3 or 4 billion men. And you ain't the only player. Right. But you're going to lose good quality women. Right. Who you have deep attachments to. Because, again, like I say, when they treating you good and, they, and, 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 you know, you get attached to that treatment, bro. You get attached to that feminine, sweet, you know, nurturing, all that shit. You get attached for that. But what you going to do when she says it's time to shit off the pot? Get up, shit or get off the pot. And you don't want to do that. You think she's going to stay with you forever? Nah, she'll try to convince your ass for a couple more months. She going to you going to lose her to somebody that know what to do with that. Or somebody that's ready for what she want. Even if she have to sacrifice. That shit don't feel good, bro. It's one thing. See, y'all be having the problem of my woman ain't sleeping with me. She disrespecting me. She don't fuck me. She cursing me out. She threw all my shit out the side. And then I found out she was cheating. Okay, yeah, that stings. That hurt. But what about the woman who treating you good? You got a deep emotional attachment to you. Care about it. Everything is going good. And then she walk away from your ass. That shit hurts. Ask me how I fucking know. That shit hurts, but that's a that's what happens. You know, and I would rather that, me, I would rather that, right, than me to play with somebody and string them along and carry out hurt and all that shit and, and hurt them. I would rather that. You see what I'm saying? But that shit hurt bad. That shit sting, and I've dealt with that. That's Again, that's where a lot of my scars come from, especially after I got older. You see what I'm saying? I'm meeting good women, bro. And they try, they try, they try. And I just, I just ain't, I can't commit to them. I can't give them what they want. You see what I'm saying? And they walk away and you see them, somebody else got that goodness. I can go into a, some story times, man. <laughs> but, you know, maybe I do it another time. I can go into some story times. But we already too long. But yeah, that, that happened to me a few times. I look now, I be like, damn. But I ain't tripping now. At this point in my life, I ain't tripping. You know what I'm saying? Because where I'm at, you know, everything that I need, I got, if that makes sense. So I ain't tripping on that now. But it was a point in time I was like, man, I wish I could have that. Nigga over there living the good life. And I know how good she is. You see what I'm saying? I damn that made her better for him. Which is cool. Shout out to him. I did my job, right? Making the world one better, making the world better one bitch at a time. Y'all know how I say, you know what I'm saying? But it's it still stings, bro. It still stings. It stings a lot, man. When when you know, again, women ain't just submitting to you just to submit to you. They want some. They want your commitment. They want access to you, and that's the exchange. That's the transaction. Them serving you, them giving themselves to you for you to lead them. And when you ain't ready for them to leave you, when when you ain't ready to lead them and commit to them, they gonna leave you. And they not gonna wait for you forever. Women are not gonna wait for you forever, bro. I don't know. Again, these dudes be these 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 coaches be teaching y'all bullshit. Oh, what's your imprint on her and she gonna you gonna have her forever? That's bullshit, bro. 
That's bullshit. One thing women are good at, if it's one thing women are good at, it's getting over your motherfucking ass. Once a woman is out of your, out of your, once a woman has got you out of her system, it ain't no going back to her, bro. Now, if you can catch her while you still, she's still missing you and she's still yearning for you, and you may catch a window where she get weak and all that, you can come back. But once a woman has purged you, you done for good, bro. Trust me, they ain't coming back. Ask me how I know. And it ain't because my game is weak. They just got me out of their system and they met somebody else. I ain't the only player out here. I ain't the only dude with game out here. I ain't the only dude that that can meet a woman's needs. You see what I'm saying? And if she a good woman, what you think she going to attract? She going to attract solid dudes. So just think about that. But these downsides are necessary. It's necessary to feel that pain. Because guess what happens when you know that? When you're ready to stop playing, when you're ready to stop playing the field, and when you're ready to stop playing the game, and you meet the one, Right, you meet that woman who meets your needs. You meet that woman who fucking, you know, who just do it for you, who check off all the boxes, who fill your voice and ease whatever you got going on. When you meet that, you're gonna know not to play with it. You're gonna know. You go. You need to feel that loss of a woman walking, a good woman walking away from your ass when everything was going right. Not a woman walking away from you after everything was going wrong. She was disrespecting you and it was just all rocky and you was just like, oh, you just was everything for me and you completed me and all that shit. Not that, but you need to feel what this, what that's like. When you fucking around, when you playing and they walking, you need to feel that. So that way when you ready and you done, when you see it, you know exactly what to do. Ask me how I know. You dig what I'm saying? But anyway, fellas, that ends that. This episode was brought to you by theplayersclub.vip, theplayersclub.vip. Be on the lookout for Ultimate Ladies Man Summit coming, Summit coming real soon. Be on the lookout. This is going to be the best ever. Let's get it. I'm your gracious, gracious game advisor. Yours truly, King Dre. I'm gone.